Hey everybody, Norm from Tested here, and today's build is gonna be another laser cutter project, and fingers crossed, hopefully something of a milestone for my own uh, journey through uh, learning Adobe Illustrator, designing vectors uh, for laser cutting on the Glowforge. Now, over the past couple of weeks and months during this lockdown, I've done a variety of small projects, uh, from risers to figure displays, of things that uh, house LED lighting strips, and all of those skills I think will culminate in something, a project that's almost a rite of passage uh, for figure collectors, and that is, yes, a Death Star hallway diorama. Uh, you've seen them online, everyone's done one. We've even done it on Tested before with just some uh, cut foam core and cut styrene using our Cricut Maker. But I wanna do one that's specifically designed for the laser cutter for eighth inch acrylic material. Uh, there's some matte black acrylic that I'm really curious uh, to work with, as well as something that would fit in some Ikea furniture. So the parameters for my idea is something that will be uh, that will be accommodate a 12th scale figure, so about six inches tall. So whether that's Star Wars Black Series figures or I have these Bandai ones I really love, um, these are six inches and uh, they can perfectly go inside some IKEA furniture like your classic glass detolf case. That's about 14 by 14 by 11 or so, or something like an Exhibit or a Kallax was what they sell now. That's that classic gridded wooden shelf that's about 13 inches by 13 inches and a little deeper at 15 inches. So I'm probably gonna design something. I've done some sketches uh, that will probably be 13 by 13 by 10. And I do want the acrylic pieces to interlock and I do wanna have room to do that classic lit lighting panel behind uh, that iconic grill. So I've pulled some references from the internet that I'll be using and let's head over to Adobe Illustrator and get started with the design. So once again, this is a project that I'm completely designing in Adobe Illustrator. I'm not doing a 3D model and then flattening the orthogonal views for laser cutting. I, I'm trying to do the problem solving of how all the pieces fit together and I've uh, been pretty happy about that. In, when I say this is a culmination of all the uh, skills I've learned so far, it really is in terms of aligning and duplicating shapes, creating uh, non-standard shapes like these polygons. And then also what I had a lot of fun doing was uh, these panel lines. Um, I didn't use any direct photo reference. I kind of did my own interpretation of it, uh, trying to keep the same relative shape and number of these uh, holes, for example, but the proportions are gonna be a little bit different because I want this to fit inside uh, some Ikea furniture. All right, so we've cut our first piece and that is this back wall here. So this is gonna be the size of it. it. Always ends up bigger in person than I think because it's smaller on the computer screen. I mean, I initially thought I was gonna do this for something like six scale and that would be 12 inches and double the height. And I think that would be way too big and probably use up way too much material. Uh, but I'm super happy with how this turned out. Um, this design work was so much fun. And this is that matte black acrylic that I wanted to experiment with. And peeling off the front, this matte black really good. No need to spray paint it. And you can see I've already uh, etched in and done uh, some outlining work here, which I got to decide whether I want to keep that as the detail or if I want some added relief. Um, probably not with this thickness of material. This is an eighth of an inch and I don't want that much sticking out. So I might just uh, try cutting some styrene pieces because I have this vector work already. And then uh, gluing the styrene on top. Now what's also nice about this material is that the back is glossy. So I have the option of going for matte black or shiny black and I want the floor panels 
to be shiny black. So that's the next piece I'm gonna cut, and then we can do our first test fit. Okay, so the floor panel just finished cutting and I'm not removing it from the laser cutter because as it was cutting, I decided to do a bunch of etches for the pattern on the floor. Uh, I had another idea, something that's not canon and not true to the design, but because I'm already gonna have LED lights uh, behind the back panel of the back wall, I think that I can even extend that lighting strip to the floor as well. And there's a part of it that I think would be cool if light was coming out from underneath. So I'm gonna keep this acrylic in place, cross my fingers and see if I can turn uh, a score into a cut and have it still perfectly aligned and see if that works. Let's go check it out. Okay, things are getting exciting. I have my major pieces cut out now. So as you can see, this is what I had earlier. Uh, this is the back wall, probably the most important piece. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is after looking at it in Illustrator, decided to go for not a square design, not 13 by 13. So this is essentially 12 inches by eight inches, which for a six inch figure, if you think of that as a standard six foot tall person, it is an eight inch ceiling, standard height. Um, that star might actually be taller than that, but uh, the proportions didn't look that great. So this is what I went for. Um, I also have a, a sheet of frosted acrylic. And so behind the grates here for the lights, uh, I would put this frosted acrylic uh, right behind it. So you get some diffused light, and yes, I will have uh, LED lighting strips behind it. Now, one thing I realized though, is it's something I never thought about with the Death Star wall paneling, is are these grates, um, are they flush? Or is it like I have it here, where the, uh, the lighting panel, that clear frosted diffusion panel is set behind the grates. And I've seen now people do it uh, both ways. They have it like this where it's behind, you have the grates first, then just another panel behind it. Um, and I've also seen it where you have uh, essentially a very flush panel. And I think I'm gonna go with the flush panel. I think looking at the screenshots, on A New Hope, uh, the walls are flush. And so that's why on this frosted acrylic sheet, I actually have cut out these individual pieces uh, in a place where you don't see them. And so I have these extra pieces and uh, with the kerf adjusted is a pretty good fit. And then I get a little bit of extra diffusion with two layers of the frosted acrylic. So that's a ton of these small pieces. Um, but it's a pretty good fit. I wonder if I can just leave them in press fit and not have to glue them in, but we'll see. Uh, and speaking of a press fit, now we're gonna do our first um, test fitting. So here is that uh, base panel. So this is the base dimensions. Again, I base it off of uh, about 12 inches by, this is about eight inches here. Um, with some extra space in the back for the lighting panel. Uh, this is that extra, uh, cut hole I had uh, and it worked out really well. It did the first pass where it was just in a uh, score, essentially an engrave, but it decided, hey, let's have light come through the bottom as well. So that worked out. I haven't peeled off this protective sheet yet because this is the glossy side. As you can tell, it's like a fingerprint magnet. And, but you can now really clearly see the, the floor panel design I went for, and this is just a score. So it's essentially just an engrave on here, not actual individual panels. But I have my wall and I have this, and I think I did test this off camera just to check, but it will fit pretty, pretty well. And there it is. It is a pretty good fit right here. Um, yeah, press fit and it stands by itself. That I'm really, really happy with. Uh, and then of course I'll add in the frosted glass back. I have these kind of door panels that will be uh, right here as well. So now the next step is let's take a look at this wall paneling and think about how 
we want to add that relief um, to it. I don't want to use laser cut acrylic again. I think eighth inch is too thick for this wall paneling, uh, but I do want to try styrene. So I have some white sheets of 40 thou thick styrene, uh, which is thicker than I've used before when we use the Cricut Maker to uh, the vinyl cutter to cut our styrene in the past. That was uh, 20 thou. And uh, so I'm going to try it on the laser cutter. We'll do some test cuts. I know styrene doesn't work really well with laser cutter, it tends to curl. Uh, you have to be very um, careful about how hot and how powerful you have your laser or else it'll just smell real funky and it could be uh, a bit of a hazard. So uh, we're going to take this very carefully and we're going to head back to Illustrator and take this already designed vector, split these apart, and then send it over to the laser cutter. So a quick check-in. Uh, turns out my styrene sheets are eight inches by 10 inches, which when I expand the shapes, it basically fills up the entire space on the one sheet. Pretty pleased with that, but I'm gonna have to be pretty precise. Uh, I also did uh, some testing in terms of uh, the power and speed on the Glowforge, and uh, I'm using 150 speed and 35 power on two passes if you have a Glowforge, and that seems to work for this 40,000 styrene. I did try a lower power, um, but unfortunately I can't do, for example, a high power on one pass and low power on the second pass. Um, and it has a little bit of scorching. Um, the edges, you know, they're clean, but there is a bit of that curling up close. You can see there's a lip uh, to this, so it's not as clean as if it was cut with uh, a vinyl cutter and a blade. Um, but for the sake of this project, uh, I'm going to use the laser cutter and, well, let's try it out. All righty, I would say that was a moderate success. Uh, definitely not ideal. So if you look in that time lapse footage, you can see that the styrene definitely was bowing uh, after that first pass along the second pass. And that means for this much of a design, this intricate, this many pieces that need to be cut out from a sheet, there are parts of the styrene that then lifted off of the bed and didn't get um, as precise of a cut as I would have hoped. And so uh, here's the popped out sheet. And you can see there are still some pieces stuck in there. You can see it's not perfect, but I think good enough for this project. And I didn't then hit every single piece with some black spray paint. Uh, and now it's the fun part. It's gonna be the assembly. Let's put it all together. All right, so we are done and actually had to call a few audibles in the assembly here. So as you can see, this is the finished diorama. I could not be more pleased with how well everything fit together. Like none of these actually, these sides, they're not glued yet. They can be, and I could use like acrylic cement or super glue, but everything is rock solid and really rigid. Um, I'm also really pleased with the uh, the matte acrylic here, which has the glossy side. You can tell that gloss on the reverse side works perfectly for the floor here. 
Um, but as you could tell, as you saw with the time lapse, I decided not to end up using the styrene pieces for that panel relief. And I started to assemble it together and it just, it wasn't clean enough. Um, the laser etched outlines here of these panel lines look so good, especially on this matte acrylic, that the styrene with those bowed edges, the curled edges, because it was laser cut and it wasn't cut with a knife, it just didn't work. And I think 40 thal was probably too thick styrene to use. So what I've done is I've placed an order for some 20 thal, half as thick, and I'm gonna try it again uh, another time with the Cricut Maker, uh, with the vinyl cutter, just to see if it looks any cleaner. Um, but right now I do love the look of this. And one thing that I'm really happy that I did do was that inlay for the lighting panels. And I think that really, really helps keep it flush. It looks really clean. And uh, the other audible I called was uh, in peeling off the protective covering for the flooring, I ended up leaving these little corner accents because I think some contrast is needed. If they're off and one of them is off, it just kind of fades away. The etching doesn't show as much and I know it's not canonical to have that type of contrast on the corners of the paneling, but I think it looks pretty good. So let's turn this thing on. So the lighting is all installed with uh, an LED strip in the back is just cool white. And I'm really happy that I decided to also add this little bar underneath so I can have light coming up from beneath the floor just on that same, uh, same strip. So I um, thought ahead of time and cut a little hole out on the side of the panel here. So I have an out for the power and let's plug it in and see how it looks. Fingers crossed. <gasps> oh, that looks so nice. Oh my gosh. I am so pleased with how the fusion here works. Um, it's not too bright. The double layers of frosted acrylic really, really help. And I love that it's flush here. You know, mostly press fit for now, but I probably will glue them in. And I have that additional LED strip which isn't super noticeable, but does give a little bit of that underlighting for these figurines. So I can, for example, plop this Stormtrooper here and maybe this version of Vader here, perfectly scaled for 1 12th for these six inch figures. And this will slot very nicely into my Ikea furniture. And it's one of those projects where in my head, I had an idea of how it could look based on sketching it out and the references, but in person, uh, when it's all assembled and completed, it's even better. And it makes me want to iterate and improve and add to it and use this as a template for more dioramas I could build for my other figures. Uh, I'm going to include links to where you can download this file yourself if you want to laser cut it out and assemble it. And there are links to uh, the products I use to put this together. But thank you so much for following along this journey. Uh, it's just another notch in my belt in laser cut projects. And I'll be back next time with another project. Until then, see it.